gentlemen. Hey, congratulations for old Henry. Thank you, Gabe. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Nice to meet you. Every, everyone always love a good old traditional Western, and this this is what uh, this is what we got, which is terrific. Really appreciate. It. Yeah, we know it's been amazing so, hearing the feedback. Me... So it's it's a uh, it's I'm you know excited every time somebody says they liked it. So it really you make something in a bubble and you don't know how that's going to be received. So it's it's great to hear. Excellent. Well, let me start with the, you know, the simple question. Patsy, where did the original idea came from? Uh, so this one, so we were actually out 40, you know, in Watertown, Tennessee, which is just outside of Nashville. And we were scouting for another project and it's this 2,500 acre land out there. So we were riding around, you know, going through the hills and just checking out all the, you know, all the areas. And we came, came over this hill and saw the house, the location down just it sits down in this little kind of secluded area. And, you know, it's this hundred plus year old house that sits up on rocks that it looks completely unsteady and just kind of walking through it. And that, it really drew me in this, you know, it's such a gorgeous location. Um, and I, you know, I live in the downtown area of Nashville, so closer to the city suburbs. Um, so the country is a little, a little scary at night, you know, and the sun started going down and I think, it just started, you know, I started thinking, okay, what do we, what do you do when you're out here alone? That's terrifying. And if somebody actually approached the house, you don't know if they're a friend or, or enemy or who, you know, you don't know what their intentions are. So the story just kind of kept evolving from there and, and, you know, added layers and layers, but it really did. The story came from the location. Wow. Tim, this is not your first rodeo, particularly into Westerns. What attracted you to uh, Old Henry? Initially, it was the what I think is the real heart of the movie. Uh, even though it's a, a a thriller and a western with a lot of violence and mystery and everything you come to expect from that genre, uh, it's at, at its heart is is ultimately a very tender story between a father and a son even as it becomes violent, there's a tenderness to it. And it certainly culminates in tenderness as well as violence. And I'm a father of three sons. And I really identified with what Potsy introduces uh, as the central conflict within the character of Henry, which is his desire to protect his son from the world outside versus his need to expose him to that world so that he's able to meet his challenges when he matriculates into adulthood. And I loved that inner conflict because it was a familiar one to me. And so once I understood that was the ultimately the real engine for the, for the film, I wanted to do it. Excellent. You know, I was reading the press notes, uh, you know, one of Potsy's statements that he called this a micro-Western, which he stole the term from I, Tim. I stole the term from Tim, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so I, I, when I read that, I was like, what in the world is a micro-Western? I guess, uh, is, it, is, is it Tim have a better definition or what? I mean, it's, it's his original, I'll, I'll give that one to Tim. It's his definition. Um, it's a great, it's a great way to say, go ahead. Tim. I think there's a great deal of truth in a good oxymoron. And we think of Westerns as expansive visually and expansive in scope. And yet this is an intimate story told mostly inside of a house, even though that house explodes into violence. And so I like the contradiction in terms of micro Western because I think this film is both intimate and enormous. Oh, that's a great definition. <laughs> Potsy, you know, um, it seems like this was filmed in one location. Did that make production a lot easier for you? Yeah, I mean, you know, every, every, set piece was you know two three hundred yards from that main house so we would you know and we shot this thing in november december in right outside of nashville so our our daylight hours were already reduced 
you know, we shot on the shortest day of the year. So adding COVID precautions to the beginning of the day and, it, you know, it, it really, time was, time was short. You know, we really were rushing through our days and, and trying to make sure we got everything um, in the short window we had. So having, you know, having our, our crew and our, our, sorry, our base camp in one spot and never having to move and just being able to be there and kind of, you know, there was times where we, we were scheduled to shoot certain things in the afternoon, but based on weather and lighting, we would switch them up and, you know, having that flexibility really, it was a, was key in getting through this, this tight schedule, I think. Excellent. Tim, every time I see you in a movie, you look different. How, how do you add, choose your looks <laughs> for every single film? Each, each part I look at is a custom job, uh, particularly as a character actor. And ultimately, I, I'm led by the writing. Um, and I love the process of collaborating with hair and makeup, but also most of all with the director and figuring out what a character looks like, how a character sounds, and then finding the simple truth in that. So hopefully one gets lost in the film and the story and isn't watching my act. <laughs> well, Patsy, I'll, I'll throw in the last question to you because uh, you, you, you have directed a few movies now and, um, and all, all, I want to say almost all your movies have some kind of country music singer like Tr Trace Atkins and <laughs> Billy Ray Cyrus. I'm, I'm going to throw in Colt Ford. And you know what? Tim Nelson is to me is a country music artist. How, how, do you, when you direct these people, is it any entirely different? No, I, that's, a, that's a good question. Not intentional at all. Um, I think I've, I've found the stories that lie in the out, outside of the big cities. So, you know, in Nashville, it's 10 minutes outside of Nashville. In Chicago, it's 20 minutes outside of Chicago, 40 minutes outside of LA. You know, the bigger the city, the further it is. But it's the people that live in these areas that they have rich fun stories and, and it's it's a I think that's a world that I've found myself in and it's it's being able to tell that in a way that's not a caricature of those people but it's an authentic view of them that that when people from those areas watch it they can they can laugh with it and they can they can relate to it and not feel made fun of or, or you know that it's so I don't know I think that's kind of a it's just kind of a niche that I've found myself in those are the stories that I'm drawn to so um, not to say that, you know, a city story is not fun, but these are just kind of the stories that I've, that I've found. So. Most excellent. Well, gentlemen, Hey, congratulations once again for old Henry. I would have loved to talk about spoilers, but we can't. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Pleasure talking Thank you. to you. Nice to meet you.